Is taking communion literally eating Jesus' body? Are we eating Jesus? That's what we're going to talk about today. Welcome to Reason for Truth. I'm your host, Stevie Garofalo, in studio today with none other than Pastor Tony Casella. Tony, welcome to the program. Thanks, Steve. Awesome to be here. Yes, sir. Listen, Tony, what I want to talk to you about, Pasta, is when we partake in the sacrament of communion. We call that eating the bread, right, or the body of Christ. Are we literally eating the body of Jesus when we take the wine and we... The fruit juice, and when we're eating the bread and the wafers, you know, are we drinking Jesus' blood? I was actually on Thanksgiving with some friends and family not too long ago, and a young Catholic man came up to me, and he just, I mean, he was up at my grill. I'm not putting down Catholicism, I'm just telling you what he did, and he was making it a, he wanted to kind of, I, I take it he wanted to pit, was his purpose of his challenge was to pit Catholicism against Protestantism. So he brought this question up. So in this video, we're going to pick it up from a recent episode I did with Tony and I did actually talking about breaking bread. You can check that out. I'll put a link to that below. But we're going to move from the biblical meaning of the word bread or the concept of bread. That That's what Tony and I did. We did that some weeks back. And we're going to talk about re-eating bread as the body of Jesus or as the bread of life. Greetings, everybody. I'm your host, Stevie Garofalo, along with special guest Tony Casella. Always wonderful to be with you. Listen, we're here is your twice-weekly antidote to the false messages that are communicated throughout the world. We're here to help you cut through culture's distorted messages that mess with truth as something that's relative, which it's not. It's absolute. And we're here to encourage you to think better, understand more rightly as a result. Hopefully you'll feel better. Welcome to Reason for Truth. Now, before we get started, make sure you do a couple things. Smack that, that listen, smash, not smack. There's a difference. So you want to smash that subscribe bell and then uh, set the subscribe button. And then what you want to do is give a smack that little, uh, you know, that little Sicilian, Italian, Gonzalo Sinistro. That boom, left Italian, left hook to the alert bell. Now, to explain to you in the Italian sense what the difference between a smash and a smack is. See, smash is with something that goes through a window. Smack is something that happens very frequently to you when you're the son of an Italian mom. Tony, I guarantee you know what this is. comes right behind the head. You never see it. It's a we What are you thinking over here? You know, you would get your hands out of it. That's for dessert. Something like that. Or what'd you say over there? What's your mouth? Uh, well, speak of respect. Uh, don't talk back to me. Don't sass me. It usually comes and it's not five fingers. It's four and it comes boo, right there. And it, it just, it's not that it really puts any brain damage on you. It just is like catches you like, oh, and when it comes from mama, Tony, does it not carry some weight? Oh yeah. I still have a sore spot back there. <laughs> Yeah, I do. My mom, listen, man, I've been gone for a long time. I still got a sore spot down there. And my mom, if she heard that, she go, did I do that to you? And I said, yeah, my, you did, but it was good. I deserved all of them, by the way, just so you know, Tony. Just saying, you know. Oh, yeah. oh gosh. All right, gang, let's just jump right in here. And, uh, you know, you know, we've been on holiday. We're getting back to New Year. And, uh, and I told you that this zealous young man came in, and he challenged me about this uh, this eating of Jesus's uh Jesus's body is it a representation or is it literally eating the bottom the body of Jesus he he took the position Tony that listen yeah it's eating the body of Jesus that was his position you're literally eating the body of Jesus and I'm thinking you know my my first response is I think by now we would have eaten Jesus all up if that was true right I mean there's only so much physical Jesus body to go around but uh, again, he took it from his uh, challenge to Protestantism, and uh, I didn't ask for it. And I told him I don't want to get into that debate. But if he wants to have it, you know, we can at least look at it respectively within this subject. And that's what I want to do today. Now, we talked, Tony, before about the importance of bread in the Bible and throughout the Bible. Remember, bread filled an important role in, in, in events of the Bible. We talked about that before, especially in Exodus, where God demonstrated to us his care in providing food in the desert to, to the Passover meal, whereby bread was made without leaven or yeast. And as a result, miraculously, as a result, the time came for the Israelites to move out of Egypt and get traveling. They had they had to prepare. They had no time to prepare. And that, that dough didn't have time to rise because Pharaoh just booted him. He said, get out of here, finally, after all the, the curses that Moses brought down according to God's leading. And the Bible tells that story in Exodus chapter 12, verse 34, says this. So the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading bowls, 
being bound up in their cloaks on their shoulders. It means they kind of had to get out of there and grab what they had at the moment. With the dough they had brought from Egypt, by the way, they baked round flat bread because the dough hadn't risen. They'd been throwing it out. You Listen, they had been thrown out uh, of Egypt so quickly they just didn't have, again, time to prepare for their trip. Now, Exodus 12.39 says this, and they baked unleavened bread cakes, that's cakes, of the dough that they had brought out of Egypt, for it was not uh, leavened because they weren't uh, they weren't. They were thrust out of Egypt and could not wait, uh, nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves. You can imagine, kind of like a bug out bag. You know, he's peppers, right? They grab a bug out bag. I guess it's all they got with them. The Bible tells us that this went on for the next forty years. By the way, wandering in the wilderness. So they what sustain? You know, here they were sustained. What phys- This is what the bread. God's bread sustained them physically. And God provided Israelites with the bread in the form of manna for his people, right? Seven days a week he provided that. I guess we can call this the bread of life, right? That's that's one meaning of the bread of life being Jesus. But that gave life to the Israelites in the desert all that time. And it kept the Israelites alive. All right, folks, listen, sorry, we lost Tony on the internet feed. He dropped off, and what happens is the recording didn't come through. So what we're going to do now, I'm this upcoming week, I'm going to go ahead and answer the question much more deeply. I'm going to look at the different options for how different churches see taking communion. Is it eating the physical body of Jesus Christ, or is it just spiritual? We're going to talk about that next week. But in the intro, you don't want to miss that. You definitely don't want to miss that. So what you want to do is make sure you do two things. Number one, boom, subscribe, crash. I mean, it's crunch, smash that subscribe button. Make sure that you just, man, give the Italian Sicilian left hook, boom, to that alert bell. Now, they call that God Sio de Sinistro. Listen, great grandfather, Miguel Damari from Marsala and the family be happy you did that. Appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you over there. This is your reason for truth for today.